Hello, uh, my name is Aidoba De Franchi from University of Geneva. I will make now a presentation that is to be seen before the session that will take place during the ACAF 2020 on November 12th at 11.30. So let's start, I will share my screen. So, um, I work for University of Geneva for the Center for Continuing and Distance Education. Um, I am their head of quality. And I will talk today about a project we have made at University of Geneva about quality assessment of distance teaching of, and learning. Um, let's start. The context of the project uh, is the institutional accreditation. Um, we have a new law since 2015 that makes a mandatory that all universities um, are accredited to keep their label university and get um, government uh, financing. So this will take place in 2022 for University of Geneva. And uh, we thought it was a good idea to start to think about what is happening at our university concerning um, distance uh, teaching and learning uh, within this uh, quality assurance system. Our strategic plan for 2025 uh, has always has also made goals uh, to develop um, distance and digital um, education, and therefore it is a great need uh, to start to tackle this topic regarding quality. We have uh, noticed uh, during last uh, ten years a clear increase in distance learning offer. And we want to make sure we can maintain the quality of the training, even though the format is now changing. The objectives uh, of, this prog of this project is uh, first to map uh, the practices that are taking place uh, at our university in terms of distance teaching and learning, um, especially in terms of quality. It's not a mapping of all that exists in terms of distance learning, but in terms of distance learning quality. We, want, we wanted also to formalize certain aspects of it in its internal quality assurance system. The third objective is, uh, consists of making recommendations uh, for future quality developments. The methodology that we used um, is the, we, we had the, cho the choice between several uh, models that have been developed all around. Uh, to mention some of them, for example, the e-excellence developed by EADTU was very interesting and very complete. There was also another interesting uh, model called ACOD uh, from uh, Asia and it was very, Australia and Asia, it was very uh, interesting too. But we finally uh, decided to take the model that has been developed by ENPOA because our um, national quality agency is part of ENPO and was especially part of this working group that has developed those uh, these documents that is called considerations for quality assurance of e-learning provision. So we thought this was close uh, to what would be used to evaluate us during our institutional accreditation, and it was kind of clever to um, use a model as close as this one. So this model was developed in 2018 and we started the project about around the same time 
more of the work happened during 2019. Uh, the model has um, 10 dimensions and we made a choice of six of them. Not that the other did not make sense, but we wanted kind of uh, make sure we could um, uh, tackle what is really spe specific of distance learning and um, kind of uh, make the project not too big because already it was a, a big one. So the six uh, dimension we selected were the strategy and policy, design and approval of programs, teaching staff, learning resources and student support, public information, and finally ongoing monitoring and periodic review of programs. That made already 41 indicators to work on. Uh, we uh, chose to um, consult different distance education stakeholders within our university, 17 of them actually, and we uh, through interviews collected information on existing practices um, in our university. The, the project uh, is organized by indicator. So as I mentioned, there's 41 indicators that were analyzed. So each one is structured in the same way. You can find the indicator title, then the analysis of the, of the indicator on the basis of what we collected on practices and on available docu documentation. Um, then, based on this analysis, uh, we presented an estimation of the indicator achievement, followed by recommendations. Recommendations that we structured in two uh, different categories, the must-have one and the nice-to-have one. Um, that already made a lot uh, a large number of recommendations but at least you could have a quicker look uh, by just looking at the must-have one. The results um, I have to underline were a pre-COVID-19 uh, uh, results. We made, as I mentioned, the analysis during 2019 and uh, we made the interviews uh, early uh, 2019. So all that we collected are a representation of what, of what was the institution before uh, the COVID-19 crisis. The results uh, can be um, presented, were presented in four different uh, ways. First, a visual diagram, uh, so you can take, uh, have a, a very quick look on the situation at the University of Geneva. Then um, a directory of practices. If you go through the analysis of each indicator, you can find there uh, really a large, not exhaustive, but large um, a number of um, what is happening within the University of Geneva. Um, then we have taken the recommendations by indicator, as I mentioned for, uh, earlier, must have nice to have ones. And we uh, chose, we picked up, and that was a very difficult work to do, uh, some of the recommendation that we call them main recommendations and we presented them in a summary. Here I share with you uh, the uh, visual uh, present representation of the results and uh, that is to be taken in one look. 
uh, you see uh, one dimension that is on green lights, one on red lights, and four on um, yellow orange light. So what what can it, can we um, conclude from this is that as a whole, um, a lot was already done on quality of distance learning within the University of Geneva, quite a lot. Um, there is still work to be done, especially on the teaching staff dimension, but we don't start by from scratch. And one of these dimensions, the ongoing monitoring and periodic review of programs, was already quite advanced. So um, that was a, a nice way of seeing uh, the, the, the situation with one look. I um, underline once more that this was pre-COVID situation of University of Geneva. What happened then is that uh, a lot of the main recommendations were already achieved by the end of the project because it was accelerated by the pandemic. The situation we had all to face uh, brought us all to uh, accelerate uh, what was happening in terms of uh, distance education. So I will mention here a few uh, items that were accelerated by the pandemic and are already to be considered as achieved. Um, on this slide especially, the, there are two portals that were uh, developed during the crisis. One for the teaching uh, staff and one for the students. Both of them uh, allowed us to tick, to tick um, a lot of recommendations. So the first uh, portal, the distance and hybrid teaching portal that is addressed to the teaching staff um, allowed us to answer um, at least five recommendations. The first one was uh, to ensure to make available, visible, an institutional positioning towards distance education. Uh, until now, there were a lot of experiences, but none uh, no real position taken by the uh, rectorate of University of Geneva. The second one was that it, this portal allowed to bring together all the existing training offer that was uh, numerous but very uh, sparse uh, within at, at the different in the different parts of university and maybe not easily visible at one glance. The portal allowed also to uh, uh, guide to use the open education resources, to um, promote the exchange and practices um, um, among teachers, among teaching staff, and the work in teams, not each one on his own, but together as a team, as a next change between peers. And finally, the, the, the concept of tutoring was more precisely defined and valued within this portal. Uh, the second portal uh, addressed to the students um, had the same uh, objective to um, make the support, the offer of support visible and to bring it together in one point. Um, it was also a possibility to underline the specificities of learning, of distance learning. Um, and to provide resources 
for adapting the students' work methods. For example, by uh, mentoring um, among students. Other main recommendations that were already achieved by uh, with the crisis, with the pandemic, were the integration of the notion of off-campus examination in the reflection on e-assessment. We had already a group working on e-assessment, but they were mainly focusing on uh, working with computers in campus. And it was clearly lacking the concept of off-campus examination. And of course, it's, it's that what happened during the crisis is that every student had to take the exam off campus. Um, the integration in the analysis of major risks uh, for the institution, for example, um, if your um, learning platform uh, breaks, you have a major problem uh, with all the students that are supposed to uh, take their, their courses on this platform. So this was a very important uh, step forward. Uh, distance items were also integrated in the learning uh, assessment, in the learning evaluation forms uh, filled in by the students. Um, and the last item I wanted to mention here is uh, online exams were quite uh, stressful, both for uh, teaching staff and for students. And it was very helpful to make circulate recommendations on how to organize them, how to create them, and how to take them for the students. So the circulation of recommendations uh, has taken place and was of great help. I'm sorry they came uh, in a wrong order, um, but here you have now uh, some recommendations that were considered um, that are not achieved yet, I have to say first, and that uh, we wanted to um, put in order by priority. So uh, we made a presentation within our Bureau Qualité, uh, Quality Office, with a representation of uh, students, of professors, of um, um, technical and administrative uh, staff, uh, um, the president is uh, vice rector, so um, our quality uh, office had to uh, define what we could consider as a priority. So the first that came out is uh, to develop uh, pedagogical expertise related to e-learning at the faculty level, as well as a complement uh, to common services. And we um, it is also about introducing uh, this um, expertise in the process of validation of programs at the faculty level. The second prior priority um, is to ensure the availability of adequate and sufficient technical support resources. It seems obvious, but it is necessary to make sure it is real and it is um, not only under great, great efforts uh, by the, the staff uh, concerned uh, as it was during the, um, the pandemic. It cannot be as hard forever. Um, the third pr priority is to document the advantages and the disadvantages of the hybrid distance format to launch studies on this and make the results available, on, for example, on the distance teaching portal. 
fourth priority is valuing the training courses that were followed um, by the teaching staff in their human resources file or on the uh, renewal file. Teachers, of course, but also assistants and administrative and technical staff. A lot of people have um, taken courses uh, to make sure they could ensure uh, the, 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 what, what they, the mission of teaching of university. Um, but now we want to make sure they are valued to encourage them. The fifth one is to finalize the skills reposit repositories, I'm sorry, um, the, the definition, the taxonomy of skills needed uh, for making available a hybrid or distance course for teachers and to follow such a course for students. So based on those repositories, then define the areas of skills that we need to develop and develop tools, training, different resources to make sure teachers and students can um, acquire those uh, skills. I will not go through this, but it's also uh, the following priorities um, that we will need to do after uh, the five first ones. This was short term. Now, we also have to consider that we have to work in a long term. And those are four items we want to make sure that are tackled uh, in the long term. So the first one is about the positioning of the University of Geneva in terms of e-learning. The, the strategy um, that is defined on this and the indicators that will allow a monitoring uh, work to reach this uh, strategy. The second one is to strengthen the pedagogical expertise related to e-learning and to integrate it especially on decision-making processes. Uh, for example, for um, buying new uh, technological tools, new software. We want to make sure if it's linked to, to teaching and learning that somebody has the expertise in terms of pedagogy to, to advise if it's a good choice or not. The third one is to integrate e-skills into the human resources policy. We want to make sure that our staff is uh, competent enough to develop such kind of courses. And the fourth point is uh, to use the, well, to, yes, to expand the use of learning data analytics from our learning platform, which is Moodle, um, to be able to use it as improvement tool for the system. Um, we want to make sure that it is correctly used and used uh, to um, improve the, the teaching and learning. Okay, I finished uh, now my uh, presentation, but I would like um, to tell you that we would very much appreciate your input, uh, especially on these aspects. The first one, the first question 
we have is how to integrate a technopedagogical expertise into the approval process of a hybrid and distance teaching and learning courses. The second one is what approach would be more suitable to ensure integration of e-learning into the institutional strategy without pointing the finger at reluctant colleagues. And the third one, in a context of academic freedom, what modalities of teacher training could be explored so that as many courses as possible meet a minimum standard of quality? So if you have experience of, on that, if you have an opinion, if you have suggestions, we would be very, very happy to hear them. So how could you share your opinion or experience? Well, you go on this uh, web page on a Padlet. You have the address here on the screen. You have to use a password, which is already also on the screen. And um, there you will have the opportunity to write and to see what other participants may have already written uh, to uh, answer and on, on those questions. If you have other comments, of course, uh, other suggestions, other experiences, there is also a place there uh, to, for you to, to write something. Well, this is the end. Uh, I want to tell you again that was a presentation that you are supposed to watch before the session and that the session where a real discussion will have the opportunity to take place is on uh, November 12th between 11.30 and 13 and the session is called Internal Quality Assurance in Emergency Situations. That's what you need to search for in the program of ACAF. You also have my email if you want to um, keep in contact, if you want to um, um, reach out for um, exchange of, of experiences. I want to thank you very much for your attention. And I want to thank uh, again ACAF for giving us the opportunity to present this project. And I want uh, to thank also my colleagues from University of Geneva who, were, who took um, part of this project, especially um, Sophie Hubert, Mallory Chaubjelet, and Pierre Yves Burgi. And that's all for today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.